James Harden made his long-awaited return to Philadelphia in an imposing uniform as his Clippers traveled to face the Sixers last night and unfortunately left with a win. We got all the quotes that we needed to hear from Harden as he did face the music and address the media this time, despite on Sunday walking out before the media was able to question him on anything when they did play out in Los Angeles. So I want to dive into specifically what he said here, reflect a little bit on the influence of James Harden on this current Sixers team, and talk a little bit about the quotes that I didn't mind and the ones that did piss me off. So I'm going to start off with exactly here. This one, I think, not a huge surprise to anybody, but James Harden was asked if he'll ever mend fences with Daryl Morey, to which he simply replied, no, hell no. So not a huge surprise. This is obviously the root of the issue, and I think that gets lost a little bit, and Harden brought up a quote about that as well, and to acknowledge that right off the bat here with John Clark, he obviously had the hell no to if he'll ever patch things up with Daryl Morey, and then Harden said, quote, if you ask them, they probably don't even know why they're booing about Sixers fans. So for starters, I do think a little bit of the conversation is lost in translation that so much of this is a direct James Harden versus Daryl Morey issue, and in reality, we likely will never fully know who is right and who is wrong in this situation, that this is something that happened between them in a private room, whatever those conversations were, whatever was promised by Daryl Morey that he didn't deliver on, or what Harden's perception of that was that didn't come to fruition. That is where the issue is, is I think from James Harden's side of things, he expected, I, I'm getting a, a max contract by deferring this money, by taking this paycheck, this one-year deal, which was the case at the time. I don't know if Daryl Morey quite saw it this way. And in Daryl's defense, his job is to act in the best interest of the Sixers. And James Harden and him have a longer relationship than just about any player and general manager that I can think of. When you think about Daryl Morey really being on the winning end of three separate James Harden trades on his career, obviously bringing him to Houston the first time, bringing him to Philadelphia, and then trading him away to, uh, from Philadelphia. So there's obviously a lot of history between these two. And it is unfortunate to see things kind of break down the way that they have. But that is the issue. That it is in business. It's between Daryl Morey and James Harden. It's not a basketball issue. It's not a James Harden clash of personalities issue. It's between Daryl Morey and James Harden. So for that, I get, and I do think that conversation is lost. I also didn't think the boos were over the top, and and frankly, they shouldn't have been. That I, I have no, I don't feel the level of animosity towards James Harden as I think a lot of people expected Philadelphia fans to at this point. That even leading up to this game, the national media making a, a ton of news about it, trying to hype this matchup up, when in reality, it's kind of one of those things that just happens. That it's unfortunate it didn't work. The Sixers tried it. He wasn't the missing piece in the way that they had hoped. But there is still some positive that James Harden did bring to the Sixers team. And at the forefront of that is Tyrese Maxey. And Harden did have a cool quote on Maxey specifically. And he said following the game that, quote, I'm very, very proud of him. He's very, very confident. He has an opportunity to make mistakes and grow. Obviously, he's a first-time All-Star, but he works his butt off. He puts the work in, so the results are going to show. And I think a lot of times when we talk about bringing veterans or having young guys learn under players, it's just thrown away as kind of a comment of like, oh, he'll learn from the veterans, or this will help out the young players. With the James Harden, Tyrese Maxey relationship, it's crystal clear you can see the imprints and the influence of James Harden on Tyrese Maxey's game. The way that he gets to his step-back three-pointer. The way that he keeps the guy on his hip when he starts weaving in the lane. There's the the drawing the fouls. These are all things that James Harden excelled at and perfected during his era. And that Tyrese Maxey soaked in like a sponge and has now applied to his game. And I think when you think about like the, the full legacy of James Harden in Philadelphia... I think it should be that, that he was kind of the bridge into the Tyrese Maxey era in Philadelphia, that the 21 and 22 year old Tyrese Maxey was not ready to step to the center stage and be an all-star and, and be the number two option to Joel Embiid, but now he is. And that was because of James Harden that the team was able to keep themselves afloat, have a puncher's chance and allow Maxey to continue getting better. And by the way, not enough people acknowledge this fully, but I do think that there is a real world where there's a, a universe where this, this current Sixers team still has James Harden on it and it's still successful. That, that continued growth of Tyrese Maxey, maybe a little switch in the pecking order where Maxey becomes quote unquote the number two as James Harden's the pure point guard in the way that is currently being the case out in Los Angeles and Joel Embiid obviously being the MVP factor that we know him to be. There is a world where that works on a team. Obviously that did not come the case and I think that was probably the grand plan of Daryl Morey when he pulled these strings and made this move happen but obviously things happen but there was one quote that James Harden did say that did make me a little sad and I did want to pull this up here about Joel Embiid that Kai Carlin asked James Harden if he has kept in touch with Joel Embiid since the trade Harden kept it simple no 
that did make me sad because I did think there was a true little duo between James Harden and Joel Embiid, one of the most effective two-man actions that we've ever seen between those two, the pick-and-roll combos, the way that they were just so productive, all the analytics off the charts. It was cool to see the relationship that they had both on the basketball court, and I thought they got along all off of it as well, that it felt like there was a little bit something there. And this is where I don't think the business and pleasure or business and, and friendship should get tied up in that side of things. Joel Embiid had nothing to do with what Daryl Morey did or said to you, James Harden. And I think it would have been cool if these were guys that were still keeping in touch because when everything is said and done, these are two of the top basketball players of our generation. And it's sad that, that, that their relationship has kind of deteriorated in that. But there is something that I did want to note on the James Harden conversation is he is getting worse. That I think there is a legitimate argument that Daryl Morey made the right call. That as we sit back and kind of digest this, that if the Sixers had handed Harden exactly what he wanted, which is a long-term max, and by the way, he's still seeking that this offseason, and it's going to be very interesting to see what happens out in Los Angeles as they fight the egos and the salary cap hits of James Harden, Paul George, and obviously Kawhi obviously already signed his extension. But it's going to be a fight there, and the Sixers could end up being the beneficiary that maybe it is Daryl Morey's best chess move ever to throw James Harden to Los Angeles, only to end up forcing Paul George out of there and back to Philadelphia. We'll see if that all plays itself out. But I did want to note from the statistical standpoint that he is regressing, that I pulled these up, these stats coming from when he first left Houston, so that first year in Brooklyn, all the way up to this season with Los Angeles. And most specifically, I want to compare his stats from last year with the Sixers to this year with the Clippers. That obviously, a slightly, slightly less on his plate from a role perspective, that he's not as in command as the offense because there is Paul George and Kawhi, so that's responsible for a portion of this dip. But I do think this is worth noting, that he went from 21 points per game the past two or the two seasons with the Sixers to just 17.1 with the Clippers this year. Led the league in assists last year with 10.7 with the Sixers, down to 8.6 this year, which is still very good, by the way. F uh, 6.1 rebounds to 5.1 rebounds in across the two seasons. His three-point percentage has gotten a little better this year, going up to 39.5%, which is well above his career average of 36.4%. And from the field, a little little bit of a dip this year as well, going from 44.1% to 43.9%, about even there. That's more of the area of my concern, and I've talked plenty about this in the past. But you can see Harden aging, that even a moment like last night, Nico Batum got James Harden with a pin down block from behind when Harden beat him off the dribble. With all due respect to Nico Batum, that is not a guy who should be snatching you from behind if you're James Harden. That This is not some Jonathan Isaac flying out of nowhere, Derek White or Giannis Antetokounmpo. We're talking about Nico Batum here, and he did get him like cleanly. Like Batum had it lined up the entire way, knew exactly what he's doing, and executed on that. And that was an eye-opening moment to me of like, yeah, the burst is just not there. And another clear example of it during the game is Tyrese Maxey was licking his chops every time that he saw James Harden. And he was able to beat him off the dribble and turn the corner so easily over and over and over again. So I, I did think that those are clear indications of things we already knew, that James Harden is aging at a rapid rate. And the best basketball years are well behind him at this point. Now, even this version of James Harden is still a very good basketball player. I don't want that to get lost, that because we have such a, a high bar of expectation for who he is as a player, that he is a little bit overly criticized than most guys are. Like, for example, if you want to compare him to like a Mike Conley, which I've done at times, that's more or less the role that Harden's playing in, but a better player than Mike Conley, of course. I, I'm frustrated with the highs and lows of Harden has always been a part of my, my beef with it, but ultimately... It will be interesting to see how things play out in Los Angeles. And by the way, James Harden, of course, had to let us let us know on social media about the uh, whole interaction of being in Philly. So he did throw up this post after the game, which I do think is a little bit of a subliminal shot here as he posts him in the arena, walking in with the caption, not a ball hog, love to see my dog's ball, hashtag Uno. So it's James Harden, man. I think we could have seen this coming. He did this kind of thing in Sixers uniform his entire time here. I do think the ball hog comment is pretty lame, and I think a lot of that, there was such like a, a conversation about him not being happy taking a backseat to Joel Embiid, and I, I, I hear this from the Tobias Harris people all the time too, of like, ah, he's just taking a backseat, and it's like, Maybe not. Maybe he's just not good enough. Maybe he's not as good as this other player. Maybe James Harden just was not as good as the reigning MVP of the league. That's the reality of the situation, and that's why you're taking a backseat. This isn't sacrifice. This is what it takes to win. This is what it takes to fit into a team construct is you play to benefit your best player. So I've always thought that was overblown. I don't think he's a ball hog, but he is a guy that will dribble the air out of the ball. And he has a little bit of that like selfish ball hog in it where he'll he'll dribble 
He'll control the ball to create an assist rather than just playing within the natural flow of the offense at times. But I don't want this to turn into a full me coming down hard on James Harden because overall, I think he should be remembered more positively than I think it's generally the case. He is a guy that, yes, the shortcomings are there, the frustrating Game 7 performance, the up and down that he was, but he ultimately gave this team a chance and was an improvement over Ben Simmons. And now the Sixers continue on. James Harden continues on his way. And maybe Daryl Morey and James Harden's paths never cross again. But we will see what happens from here. Appreciate you guys for tuning in this video. Make sure you're dropping a like on this video. Drop your comments on the James Harden return, your thoughts as a whole. And make sure you're smashing that subscribe button. Appreciate you a ton here at Sixers Digest. Trying to keep this family growing and take things to some new levels. So thank you guys so much. Let me talk with you next time. Peace.